Hello and welcome to this spotlight episode on Killingworth Billy, the third oldest preserved locomotive in the world. Of the surviving early locomotives in preservation, there were, until recently, two enigmatic mysteries. Hetton Lion and Killingworth Billy. Lion was once thought to have been built in 1822, but recently has been shown to have been built around 1850. Killingworth Billy was thought to have been built by Robert Stevenson and Company in 1826 for the Springwell Colliery in County Durham, and thus Billy was only a year younger than her more famous sibling, Locomotion, built in 1825. New research, however, has overturned these 150-year-old assumptions about Billy. The suggestion that Billy had been built in 1826 for the Springwell Colliery arises in the 1860s when the author and guru of self-help, Samuel Smiles, published his 1862 biography of George Stevenson. In it, Smiles included a woodcut of the then surviving Springwell Colliery locomotives, which he states was later used at Killingworth Colliery. And from then on, it was assumed that Billy was one and the same as the then surviving Springwell locomotive. The London and North Western Railway muddied the waters even further by producing a photographic postcard of the Springwell locomotive and claiming it was used in the construction of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, which it categorically was not. Sadly, the Springwell locomotive, which made it into the age of photography in the 1860s, no longer survives. But what of Billy? Well, we know for certain it was at work at the Killingworth Collier in Newcastle for a staggering 65 years, trundling backwards and forwards hauling coal wagons until 1879 when it was set aside and stored in the colliery workshops. Such a long working life is a testament to the robustness and general applicability of George Stevenson's early locomotive's designs. That a locomotive designed during the reign of King George III was still at work during the reign of Queen Victoria and is still in remarkably good condition demonstrates the skill of those who built and maintained her and Stevenson's excellent original design. Billy came to prominence during the Stevenson centenary of June 1881, and at their conclusion, Charles Palmer, the proprietor of Killingworth Colliery, presented her to Newcastle Corporation, although the town fathers weren't quite sure what to do with their gift. In 1883, Billy went to the United States to take part in the exposition of railway appliances held in Chicago although it's likely that the organisers had in fact requested Puffing Billy and not Killingworth Billy. Eventually Billy was mounted on a plinth above the high level bridge in Newcastle, where she remained until 1896, when she was moved to a plinth in Newcastle Central Station. From 1945 to 1982, she was housed in the Newcastle Museum of Science and Industry, before finding her current home at the Stevenson Railway Museum in 1988. But how old is Billy? Dr. Michael Bailey, the leading expert on early locomotives, only took a painstaking study of the surviving locomotive and concluded that despite having been rebuilt on at least five occasions, key dimensions, including the gauge of 4 feet 8 inches, the spacing of the wheels, the cylinder dimensions and the valve gear geometry had all been retained from an earlier locomotive. The wheel base, and thus the cylinder spacing and the gauge, were crucial to dating the locomotive as they compare with Stevenson locomotives built around 1816. So all of this means, rather like the ship of Theseus, which had every rotten plank replaced and was still the ship of Theseus, that Billy retains in its overall design a locomotive built in 1816, making it the third oldest in the world, second only to Puffing Billy and Wylam Dilly, which were built in 1814. Dr. Bailey will be presenting his research on Billy at the 7th International Early Railways Conference to be held in June this year, and it looks to be a fascinating paper.
So that has been a quick look at Killingworth Billy, the third oldest locomotive in the world, built around 1816 by George Stevenson. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please like, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. You can also help this channel grow by showing your support on Patreon, with Patreons getting early access to all my videos and a mention in the end credits. So I hope you have enjoyed this, and see you all next time on Rail Story.